Welcome to another episode of You Are A Lot, an ADHD podcast. I'm your host, Jen Kirkman. This week, RSD, rejection, sensitivity, dysphoria, disorder. You can pick your own D. I've heard it called both. I just call it rejection sensitivity. Now, I know in previous episodes, we've talked about emotional intensity, and I could have put this all in one episode, but it would have been 9 million hours long. And I want to really be specific about all of the symptoms of ADHD. And one of them, not everyone has to have it necessarily, but one of them is RSD, which sure can fall under the category of emotional intensity, but it's a little different because it is defined as something a little more specific. And yet, it's kind of undefinable. So this episode is going to be a little different in that, you know, we did talk about solutions for emotional intensity in a previous episode. And I would ask you to refer to that episode if you want some solutions for your RSD, because I believe they all uh, would apply to RSD. So Episode 8, Emotional Intensity Part 2. You might want to replay that. Check it out if you skipped over it. Because this week, what I want to do with this episode is focus on you all listening out there not feeling alone and not feeling crazy. Because I took to social media, which I love to use as a tool for good, and I asked my Instagram followers, if you have... RSD, can you tell me how you experience it, what it feels like in your body? Because I think, and you all gave so many answers that were truly so relatable, and it just made me want to give all of you a hug. And I figured I'm going to read everybody's answer so that you can hear hopefully yourself in other people, you can hear how it feels for other people and you can understand that this is real. You know, I know a lot of times even those of us with ADHD can question, is this real? You mean there's emotional intensity and rejection sensitivity? I mean, this seems like a lot. Are we just kind of babying ourselves? No. So for me, the difference between RSD and just your basic garden variety emotional intensity that we we talked about a few episodes ago is for me, RSD is very physical. And a lot of emotional intensity is physical. And as we know, our nervous system runs the show. And that is in our body, not just our brains. We get it. Everything lives in our body. But for me, when I know, oh, I'm feeling a little emotionally intense, is that something that I can check into, am I hungry, angry, lonely, or tired right now? Um, Have I let someone cross a boundary? Have I not met my essential needs? That I can do a check with when I'm feeling the emotional intensity. But RSD is a little different in that it physically hurts. I feel it in my solar plexus. I feel it in my heart. I feel it in my stomach. I feel it in my throat. It can bounce around. It can be all those areas at once. But it is so overwhelming. And then it comes with the thoughts and the emotions. Shame, right? And then we get into the stories. We tell ourselves, I'm unlovable or whatever yours is. And that is for me the difference. RSD feels a little more, (laughs) a lot. Do you know what I mean? It feels a little more irrational. Because, because it, I mean, it's not that rational. It's, it's, you know, your feelings are real and they're valid, but it's, it's, um, it's truly just like the most heightened version of a feeling that I, that I can explain. You know, emotional intensity for me is a little bit more. How do I cognitively make a decision to act differently in this situation? But RSD, I may not be acting any differently, but it's in there. I'm going to work and I'm feeling the physical effects of RSD. I'm getting through the day, you would have no idea. A lot of times if I have the ability to lean into it because I just don't know what else to do, that is the thing that will keep me in bed for a day or two. So 
and and a lot of times it is it's not just internal for no reason like the way if you have clinical or chemical depression i mean i'm just speaking for me you know a depression can come on and it it really is just chemical and of course external factors can affect it but it's not like if you're in a episode of depression and someone gives you a round trip ticket around the world you're suddenly going to feel better that's what is so difficult about depression is that you think i should feel better i just got a round trip ticket around the world to stay in five star resorts no less and i feel nothing right it's an absence of feeling rsd is not depression because it is not an absence of feeling but it can be so overwhelming that you can appear as though depressed because there is so much feeling going on, you kind of just are hanging in there. So let me just quickly go through what it is. We'll just define it as it's been defined by the experts. And then I'm just going to end the episode with reading all of your beautiful, honest answers. How does that sound? So if you just want the educational part, you can listen to this first part. And if you just want to hear what other people say, Fast forward through until you find it. Okay. I know what you're thinking, Jen. You should have time code links in your episodes. I could. I should. I might. It's something I might do for the future. Today is not that future day. But okay. So RSD. Rejection, sensitivity, disorder, or dysphoria. is an intense and emotional response caused by the perception that you have disappointed others in your life and that because of that disappointment, they have withdrawn their love, approval, or respect. The same painful reaction can occur when you fail or fall short of your rather high goals and expectations. RSD commonly occurs with ADHD and causes extreme emotional pain that plagues both children and adults, even when no actual rejection has taken place. 